Okay. An action. In Photoshop is a set of steps that have been previously recorded that will do a do that set of steps on whatever image you have open. Ideally, a properly built action is something that will be able to be repeated across every image that you run it through with the same result every single time. Uh, actions can be tricky, where if you're working in a production environment, not so easy to do, if that makes sense. Sometimes uh, building the perfect action is a really tricky concept, and uh, you can use automatic steps and you can use manual steps. Um, if you have a image that, for example, is overly white, and you run an action on it that has a lot of automated steps in it, then you run the same image on an image that's a uh, same reaction that's on an image that's overly dark. Not going to have the same result if it automatically processes things. Um, there are two ways to going about making actions. Um, to bring up the actions window, what you want to do is you want to go to Window Actions. It's a little play button right there, and it brings up this list. These are some of the Photoshop default app actions. For the most part, they're garbage. I mean, you may want to use them, but you can just throw this away, quite honestly. If you do that and you forget, well, for some reason you wanted one of those, this little arrow in the top right, if you click that, all the actions that are uh, recorded in Photoshop and prepackaged with it are at the bottom of this list. From commands to video actions, you can just click that. Like, for example, if I wanted image effects, I click that button and it loads that action set right back up. It's a nice little thing. If you accidentally delete it, you can bring it back. Um, for example, if I wanted to run an action, uh, let's look at, well, sorry, let's go ahead and do that. I have aged photo. I'm going to not apply it to the already aged photo, but this one. At the bottom, I have play, record, stop, folder, meaning you make a new action set, and then a create new action. Um, and of course, a delete if I wanted to trash this stuff. You can delete individuals out of a action set. I'm just arbitrarily deleting things to show you, but it is what it is. If I, pl if I go ahead and play this, I have no idea what this is going to do if I play Lizard Skin. I click the button, runs through a whole bunch of steps, still chewing on it, and if I zoom in, what it did is it used a uh, kind of mosaic tile effect on it that you would have to go back in and brush into the skin if you wanted to make it actually lizard skin of sorts. Do you have an image open? Mm -hmm. uh, I, do you have an, an action selected? Yeah, but you got it. You'll notice that the actions, um, especially this action, after having suffered through the displace filter for your homework, does not actually warp it to her face. The proper way to go about this would be to apply this texture to her face, warp it to it so it looks natural instead of just being an overlaid tile mosaic. We could do it, but that would be pretty complex. So let's avoid that for now. And then just look and see what this did. This little lizard skin action is what I played. If I click the little triangle right next to it, it breaks it out into the individual little steps. So you can see what it did on a line-by-line -line basis. Made a snapshot, converted it to RGB, made a layer, changed the blending mode, filled it, added noise with specific steps, pointillized it, blurred it, and then ran a stained glass filter. So essentially what it did is to make this effect, it dumped in a whole bunch of big grainy pixels, fuzzed them up, and then ran a uh, stained glass filter on it so that you get that kind of raised texture effect. Uh, and then when it was all done, it embossed it onto the image so you get the depth and then you're, you're set. That's all that it did. All of those steps are embedded in this one action. And by clicking the action and clicking play, it automatically goes through and plays all of those steps for me. If I look into my history here, the history palette is the one that's right above there. Remember, it's a dot, dot, dark dot with a little arrow back up to the top. I can see all of the steps that it did. So it opened, duplicated the layer, filled it, added noise, 
pointillized it, blurred it, stained glassed it, and then embossed it. As easy as that. Uh, now this is kind of a cliche, nasty action that I would never use ever. Um, so the point of all this is going to be be able to record our own. Uh, I don't want to do that quite yet, but I do want to show you one more thing. Under this little play button, if you go to the actions window, there's a way, there's a mode called button mode. It makes working with these really quick and really easy. If I just push this button, it does all of those steps for me. It makes my life easy. That way I don't have to accidentally click on something that I didn't want to break, so to speak. Um, if I went, went ahead and go, uh, let me trash this real quick. If I went ahead and list, looked at it without looking at it at button mode, and I accidentally checked the box right here, and then played the soft edge glow, what's going to do, it's going to prompt me every single step, which is really annoying. Yes. If that little box is checked, it does its thing, and it wants, it wants to talk to you. It's like, hey, I need your interaction. Hey, I need you to tell me to do something. Hey, this is a step that's already been saved, but I need you to perfect it. So from that point forward, um, you can toggle on or off individual layers within this step. And this little checkbox here toggles on and off steps within that action. So you can say, you know what, for this round, I can skip that. We're good. Don't need it. If I don't want to see a prompt ever, I just click the little the dialog box off. If I don't want to accidentally break something, what I do is I go to button mode, and then I just click it. And that's it. Really simple, really easy. Questions?